Uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna freestyle let's, with let's you. What happened? I'm, I'm gonna do Kermit the Frog though. Can you do Kermit the Frog one more time? Should I do it in the show? No, we can do it right now because we're. I haven't started the show, but we're live. <laughs> oh, we're live. Hello, everybody. We're live. Hi. Okay. So, full disclosure, this is something that I saw um, Seth MacFarlane doing on a on a Graham yes. Norton show a few years ago, and I thought, yeah, I can do that. It's like the Pablo Francisco thing with the Arnold yeah. thing. You know, get down, everybody. You know, come on, one man. You know that crap. Anyway, right. um, so I saw him doing a Kermit on Graham Norton, and he took the script of Taken, Liam Neeson's character at the beginning of the movie, and he made a Kermit, and it sounded a bit like this. I don't have any money, but what I do have is a special set of skills. I will find you, I will hunt you down, and I will kill you. There you go. All right, Yay! and with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the show. Okay. This is 2OF Entertainment. Well, here we go. It's the man that promises you nothing and delivers. It's the veritable man motor mouth. It's Road Woods who feels the need to call himself Rob Vega. It somehow makes him feel important. Anyway, do have a listen and try not to throw up. Oh, and here we is, November 7th, 2024, the okay, day the right died. I want to <laughs> dive, no, no, I want to dive right in. I want to dive sure. right in, because, sure. but I want to dive in in a different way, because, okay. I mean, yes, every, I mean, doom scrolling, all of this crap, I've seen yeah. people doing it, the end of the world. Okay, so as someone who is, I wouldn't say I'm a complete outsider, in fact, I had a, a friend who worked on a radio station in Oklahoma City, uh, right. the late Dave Kelso. He was one of the uh, first responders. Um, oh, wow. He worked on a station called KRXO in Oklahoma. Well, actually in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, in the metropolis. Uh, yeah. Uh, very cool guy. He was actually one of the first responders when the bombings happened. So he's he oh, wow. saw lots of things. Yeah. And... He was he was an on air personality on the station, and he said I got to know him very well. And he said to me, um, he was a friend of my immigration attorney, and he said to me, um, "You know, Roald, you're like an American with a foreign accent." <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. But he, he, and, I will say so this. That's, yeah. What? If I, if I if I may, I will say this. You are an American. I, with a I want to say accent. something, but yes, okay, go yeah. ahead. Go. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You're American before I have a, I'm going to make a statement when after you're done. Go ahead. Well, my, my statement is going to open up a, a litany of things. So why don't you just say what you want to say and then I will <laughs> yes, I'll get my I will make I will make my statement when you've made your as, statement. As a capitalist, yes, I'm excited that we have um a, a autocratic authoritarian dictator now in power. Because the stock market, the currencies, the bond, everything yeah. is just going up, up, up. Crypto algorithms now are out of control. So as a capitalist, all for it. Now, mm -hmm. part B to that is someone who believes in the Constitution. I don't know yet. <laughs> so we have okay. to see where that's going to take us. So here's what I want to say. Um, sure. First of all, I don't think there's anything to worry about. That would be my thing. I would say that. Now yeah, there will South be Africa. some. No, there. There are some people, possibly you, who would disagree with me. I I seem to have more faith in that place than maybe some people there do. I think you'll be fine. Uh, there's going to be fights. What 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 I hear somebody said? America just got back with a crazy ex. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. Never. But I think if you look at that constitution you mentioned, I still haven't said what I wanted to say, but I'll, I'll get to it. If you look at that constitution that you mentioned, and mm -hmm. I wonder how many people they've actually, how many Americans have actually read it from, you know, cover Four. to cover. Or Four of them. That's it. Front to pamphlet back. Four. Okay. Four. Uh, all right. But I think you will find uh, you're okay. Uh, okay. You'll be fine. Now, when the country was obviously put together, they did not want a king. Now, yes, he behaves 
the way he behaves. He is what he is. I'm not going to have a, I mean, whatever. Right. I don't know the man. I don't know him. So I, I have a media representation of him, and so do we all. What I want to say is um, you'll be fine. He will do what he wants to do. He will try to do. But, I mean, last time, you know, things were fine. You'll be okay. And you mentioned the stock market's doing okay. <sighs> Businesses there will be fine. I, I don't know if it was Reagan. Maybe it was Reagan who said this. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe someone made it up. But America runs itself. It's fine. It doesn't The president is a servant of the people. Um, you get in the way of business and then your country falls. That's it. So get the hell out of the way. Businesses make that country great. Create things. Deliver the goods. Not presidents. Don't be so... No. That's actually, um, in terms of, because everybody's scared of the word, that's actually quite a socialist view. And I don't think America is a socialist country. At least I don't think it wants to be. So I think you're fine. I think you'll be okay. Uh, he'll be out there. Know. He'll be out there partying at mar a He'll be making crazy speeches. He'll be dancing. Whatever. It is what it is. His wife. We only see, and she just made that rare. Right. And then she shows, I don't even think she's real now. I think she's just AI generated and they just possibly, yeah, possibly. So. But I will say this um, yeah. for anybody that's wondering, and, I, and maybe they're not, but I've seen so many things where people, what happened? What happened? Yeah. I said this before, and I'm going to say it again. I think it's, I think it's the greatest. Is it the greatest country? Who cares? Stop worrying about that. I think it All is right. a great social experiment. That is only what 250 years old. It has been stuff. It's produced amazing things. It's produced awful things. But um, the freedoms remain. You're not going to lose your freedoms. Maybe I'm being naive, but I don't. I think you'd be fine. But uh, so it's all good. But I think I think maybe in the last 20, 30 years, even before Trump, uh, we lost maybe our even through, maybe even during the Obama era. I'm sorry, Barack, but I lived there when you were the president, and I lived in a in a Republican town, and I can only relay what people were telling me. I did some talk shows there as well, and I think, in a sentence, I think America has got a listening problem. It's got a listening problem to the world, to its own people. Now, of course, people can disagree with me, but I think that's what it is. That's what I heard or didn't hear when I lived there. There were a lot of people who, I mean, Steve, Americans like to be heard. And when I lived there, when I lived there, which is great, that's great. Yeah. I like to be heard. That's why yeah. I'm that American with a foreign accent. I love it. It's good. Yeah. We want to be heard. We want to be acknowledged, freaking affirmed, whatever it is. You want, you want, you want to be seen, whatever that means. Okay. And I think, certainly when I lived there, it was a... Um, uh, Barack Obama being a Democrat president right. um, and the Republican town that I lived in, you know, there were, there were tensions. And I listened to their gripes and I heard what they were saying. And I, it just struck me. It's not about who's right, who's wrong, who's got the best policy. I'm not talking about that crap. That's, that's right. for another show to figure out. You know, abortion, this, women's reproductive rights, immigration, economy. I'm, right. No. I'm saying that people, the people of that town, did not feel like their government was listening to them. And that was in 2012, 13, 14, 15, when I was there, just prior to when Trump got in for the first time. And I don't think, if you, if you, if you want to win people over, yes, you can make them promises, you can lie to them, you can do whatever, but they must feel like you see them and you're listening to them right. and maybe even give them some form of respect. And I think... From what I've seen over the last 30 years of my association with the country when I first went there, is that everyone was surprised, and they shouldn't have been. The media, the media ignored a lot of people. I'm not, you know, I don't know. I honestly don't know who I would have voted for, and that's crazy coming from me. That's mm -hmm. crazy coming from me. I don't think either candidate was great, um, but it's I not like that. We, we don't have a great selection here. I'm not saying they're bad people. They're fine. Whatever. You know, people, the problem is, I would say people don't know how to listen, and they don't know how to disagree. I have mm -hmm. got friends that I heartily disagree with, but we're still mates. We can still share a drink. And there is such a, 
it's just politics, people. It it right. they, they become so personal and so yep. insidious. And I think these are people who are supposed to just serve you, whether they're Democrats or Republicans or Green Party or RFK or whoever. They're there to serve you. They right. you are their boss. And if your and if your employee is not listening to you, then you get another one. And that's what they yeah, did. The they fired is, one and they got another one. It is right. as simple and as complicated as that. And I right. see people losing their minds over it. And I go, you're fine. Really? Don't worry about it. Now learn the lessons. If you don't like it, if you don't like it, right. then you can either accept it or you can do something in a constructive way. Don't bash but, this person. But, that's Figure out whole, your what is your right, plan? Don't worry right, about the person you don't like. Well, what is so your plan? Here's the issue. Here's some of the issues. That's why he now, won. I, Sorry. No. I, I'm I'm hoping that our constitution stays intact. But when 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 Mr. Trump says I'm going to invoke the 1897 Federal Act, which means I can put troops everywhere, or I'm going to do yeah. that, and he makes these statements, I look at this, and you never conceded that you lost in 2020 and you made statements that you didn't win this time, it was fake. And you, and you want to pardon now everybody who did the insurrection on January 6th. That's where I have a problem with, because then mm -hmm. this is history repeating itself. You're going back to the twenties and thirties. You can pick your country. And that's where yeah. I get worried because I've seen the play, read the book and then watch the movie. It doesn't end well. Mm -hmm. um, and and it's going to get to a point, and you got your favorite person, Elon Musk, now telling people that <laughs> he made a statement that hey, Elon, how's it? I know you're watching. He wants, of, so, he wants to get rid of Social Security, and he wants Who to does? get Medicare. So Elon Musk. He wants. He's going to be in charge of global government crap or whatever Trump's putting him in charge of. So he's made statements state. like get, get rid of get rid of Social Security, get rid of Medicaid, Medicare, and I'm thinking. So all these people that have been putting in, and that's what they're going to they plan on living on. I'm thinking you're going to cause a civil war. I mean, maybe that's the plan, but I'm like, mm -hmm. you, you're you not bringing the country together when you make statements like that. You really are dividing it. Now, like I said, as a capitalist, I'm great. I'm glad you're here. I don't agree with your tariff thing because I don't think the average American is going to be able to afford to live um, when you start increasing prices 50, 60, 100%. And the Americans don't understand what a tariff is. They keep thinking the countries are paying for it and they don't realize the end user pays for it. And that's fine. So I'm neither candidate, in my opinion, should be president. I'm glad I'm, if, if you want to talk about a comeback story, I'm great. Great. I'm glad you won. Now I'm hoping that your rhetoric is just rhetoric. Unfortunately, I read the history of the 20s and the 30s of this other little gentleman who they thought his rhetoric was his rhetoric. And that did not go well. So okay. that's where my I'll, concern is. And the only other thing, let me just say this. You, you're right about mm -hmm. America doing awful things. Um, that was the Backstreet Boys. You know, that was that. That was, <laughs> that was the worst thing in the world we could have and, ever done, I'm just saying. And Canada with Justin Bieber. Um, there you go. Yes. Um, okay. Look, again, I lived in a Republican yeah. town. And right. I, I, it sounds like, it sounds like I say I'm. I'm telling you, I know people of color. You're like I know people of color. You know, but South I, Africa, you know a whole bunch. <laughs> well, I'm I'm very much a minority here, and, and my, all my friends are people of color. I, right. it, it, it gets interesting when you say I know some white people. And they go, really? You found a white guy? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I I woke up in the morning and I saw him in the mirror. No. Um. The the thing but for I'm me is the. <laughs> um. Yes, he's he's said whatever stuff, whatever things. Mm -hmm. Now. I'm going to get back to my original point. Um, sure. There was a guy who once said, you've got to judge a country not by its extremes, but by its ordinary man. So right. every country, every country, America is not at all alone in this. Every country has got highs and lows, good, bad, extremes. Every mm -hmm. country's got that. Everyone. Okay. The guy you've got to worry about is the guy in the middle. What does is, what is, what is the ordinary the middle man say? And I got to tell you, from my visit to 31 states and the times over the decades that I visited, I have found most of the people, of course, you've got some lunatics. We've got more here. We've got more lunatics. So don't worry about it. And by the way, you've got our biggest lunatic, so you can keep him. Yeah, but uh, so <laughs> you're very welcome. But I'm saying that the, the ordinary folk I've found were pretty, um, I just want to be safe. I want to be able to 
you know, uh, get a good job. I'm right. I worry about border security. I don't want all kinds of people stealing my jobs. That is a universal thing in the certainly the Western world around the world. So no different. Now I'm going to get back to my original point. Yes, you get all kinds of people that are rarely shouting and screaming things and holding up placards. And yes, you get Donald saying things to them. That's called a rally. Is it bad? Sure. Um, but I'm saying if you think of the things he said before he won in 2016, uh, he said a lot of stupid stuff as well. Politicians say, I'm not saying he's, I'm not saying Kamala Harris said bad things. Maybe she ran a better campaign. I'm not saying Boris Johnson didn't say things. That's not what I'm saying. So ju we're just concentrating on him for a minute. When he won last time, in the lead up to it, he was going to, the Mexicans are going to build the wall and all this crap was going to happen, and it never did. So what I'm saying is a good politician, a good a good performer, which is, mm -hmm. reads his audience and goes, what do they want to hear? What do they want to see? He meets mm -hmm. with his people before and says, sir, just, just talk about the Mexican. These people are, they hate Mexicans or whatever. I don't know why, but just... That should just go with that. He said, but he right. in the back, I say, but I'm I'm fine with the Mexicans. They're cool. I, I mean, you know, they're great. No, no, no. These guys mm, just just pump that message up. Uh, I'm not saying. I'm sure he makes some. I'm sure a lot of this is what he believes. But he's got advisors who push him in directions which work for his audience, which work for his rallies. Man, you got to say the man worked really hard at those rallies. You don't have to like what he said, but he goes on and on and on. I have exactly. <laughs> I have, I've hosted events. I've worked live events. It's 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 actually quite stressful. It's a lot yeah. of work, and he yeah. just turned it on, and he was out there doing the work. And yeah. I mean, you know, people like to see that. It doesn't matter what he says. This is what I'm going to say. It doesn't actually matter what he says. Okay. Um, what they what people like is the fact that he's there. He's in their town, and he's saying, "I'm your man." Ah, yeah, Kamala Harris this, ah, the border that, ah, the Mexicans this, are we going to deport all the immigrants? Here's, all, here's, all, here's what I want to say about all of that. I he won't do it, but I, don't, I doubt whether he will. He might. He wait, wait, might. No, let, me give you, let me give you why he can. So, uh, no, I know why he can. Right? He... No, 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 so the Democratic I know Senate what you're going to is, is, is yes, 52. I know. Even okay, I know. And the, I know, but the people watching don't know because they don't. Have they don't know. Yes, yeah. the Senate has forty-four Democrats now. The House has fifty-two Republicans. The um, Congress oh, has one hundred and ninety Democrats and two hundred five Republicans. So, hmm. um, in theory, his party now controls everything. And once again, yes. if it's all rhetoric just to get in, I'm good with it. But mm -hmm. if it's not rhetoric, and he really is going to do ten percent of what he said, and I'm not talking about you know, be tough on all these countries and Iran can't have nuclear war, like all the things that he, I agree with, like I said, a whole bunch of what he says. Then he crosses over a line. It's like I talked about Mein Kampf. In Mein Kampf, it's 800 and some odd pages. And the first 400 pages, if you read it, is a great book. It talks about infrastructure and how you build a country and blah, 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 blah. And then you turn the next page and goes, and then you kill all the Jews. And that's where we have a differ of opinion. So, I mean, it's like, it's so, and this to me is is sort of that. It's like, if he sticks to his, uh, America's already great, but make America stronger again, whether globally, financially, economically, blah, 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 blah. That's a wonderful thing. I'm all for that. But if you're going to start being like, oh, there can't be another election because it won't be fair and I should be the ruler till I die, things like that get me. That's where I start going, really. And then you've got the, the billionaire who wants to get rid of everything. And I'm like, okay. so how are people going? That's these. Are, this is where I look at it and go, this is where I get worried because okay, okay, okay. Steve, okay, Steve, there you go. Steve, I've, got, I've got to say this. Okay, first Steve. of all, I, I wouldn't worry about the African American billionaire. Um, when I say African American, I mean <laughs> yes, Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. Yeah, I know what you mean. Who is who is an African American? Which, um, quite frankly, is why I think it's and and people can disagree with me and throw whatever. I think it's a really stupid term, an African American. Yeah. What is African about you? Right. It's, it's silly. You, you're an American. Drop, right. drop the. You are, you are of African descent. Sure, sure. But you're an American. Right. This, right. this extra label is, is, is absolutely meaningless. And I've seen Americans, Black Americans, come to Africa, and there is nothing African about them. This is yeah. a different kettle of fish. The, yeah. the, 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 the Black folk that are Africans here, 
They are, and I'm going to say it, I'm going to patronize the hell out of them. They are some of the toughest, strongest, mm -hmm. most unbelievable people. And I'm sorry, um, they're long distant cousins from America. Not even close. Sorry, yeah. not even close. They don't understand the hardships that some of the people have been through here. But it's not a competition of who's gone through the worst. And I don't want to get onto that African-American thing. By the way, you can keep Elon. Um, but now in terms of him, <laughs> in terms of him, in terms of him getting rid of things like Social Security and Medi uh, mm -hmm. Medicaid and whatever the hell else he wants to get rid of, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say this. I know some people who knew him when he lived here. I yeah. know a little bit about who he was as a kid, how he grew up. He was, I'm not going to call him names, but... Yeah, let's just say it doesn't surprise me that he's enjoying all the adulation. He okay. is a man. He is a man who is, and that's why he gets on very well with the Don. They are they are different forms of narcissists. I right. fine. Good luck to him. He's done well. Maybe I'd be a narcissist too if I was worth three hundred billion dollars. It's possible. I don't know. I'll never know. But I wouldn't worry too much about him. Um, yes, the sip. What I'm saying is, there's talk and then there's action. Now, I would right, say right. in terms of being worried, what you have is you've got elections in two years anyway. And if people are not happy, there is a means to punish him. There's a means for people to clamp down. Is he going to try and do stuff? You don't know. That's the thing about humans. They say one Actually, thing, they do, do another. Because he did, he did stuff when he was, we already do know. So, yes, we do know. But, but Steve, what I'm saying is some of them were daft. The NATO mm -hmm. thing is ridiculous for me. But... That's, I'm not the president, that, it, that's his problem. The comments right. about why are there, why, are there, why is there an American pre presence globally? You should probably read a history book, Donald, that's why. You really do want to have influence around the world. You right. really don't want to make the Germans pay. Yeah, you really want to base in <laughs> Germany. What, 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 <laughs> happens, what happens when things go pear shaped in the Middle East and they fly them to Germany for medical treatment. What I'm yeah. saying is it's something to be said for having a presence around the world. It's not that it benefits the local country. It benefits America to keep yep. an eye on shit around the world. That's, yep. you know, in a, that's a vulgar summary of why it is absolutely essential that America mm -hmm. retains bases around the world. I've yeah. always said there, you've got to have somebody keeping an eye on the world. Is America the best? Maybe not. Yes, it is the best. Is it perfect? No. But I would sooner have America keeping an eye on the world than pretty much any other country I can think of. And in order to do that, you need you need that presence around the world. But that's another story. What I'm saying is if people don't like him, if they don't like if things get expensive, if gas prices go up, whatever, then there's an election in two years and you can do something about it. So you're fine. When... When I'll tell you when you you can get worried when there is a when there is a clear and present threat to the election process and I don't think that's true I think you're we'll fine see. yes we'll people the, the Democrat the, the the election didn't go a lot of people's way but it went it happened right. it got done well now that's because, because, yeah, well, that's he's because happy because he won and if yeah, the right. Democrats won but whatever steve it doesn't matter if the democrats would have won there'd be lawsuits like there was the last time so okay it's, it's, the, the utopia that you describe is very nice listen and i hope in I'm two years when the, the senate, have, when the senators have a way the congress to keep it on the check right, right but i'm just they saying i hope in two check. years i i hope in two years we can have elections and i hope in four years when it's time for mr trump to leave that he leaves because he's will. done his thing We'll see. You, you, you have a lot of confidence because you're not here. You don't. No, no, and we, no, we, and we get no. to read and hear everything he says yes. from whether it's the Financial Times, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, Bloomberg, and we get to see his speeches in full and see what he says, and then we get to read everything. So, on our side of the I've pond, watched them. Steve, I've okay, watched them. So I've watched we, them. I've like, read them. Also, I, I read them too. So, like I said, things he says. Oh, stupid. Scary. Yeah. No, no, not stupid. There's a difference between stupid and scary. He says okay. things that are scary. And I'm hoping it was the rhetoric. So he got, he gets to get in the office and he gets to do like, make the world safe, right? Get rid of the nuclear arms in the Middle East, do whatever he's going to do with North Korea and Russia and whatever. But if not, then 
like I said, the playbook's okay. already been written. The movie's already been there. And America got okay. what they chose. And, yes. and maybe that's what America wants is to have a dictator. That is okay, that's very important. That is what people chose. That is what the country chose. Right. And that is what that is what is. So yeah, I agree. I think I think I've always said, I mean, I don't know him personally. I can't I can't be personally unimpressed with him because I don't know him. And the weird right. thing is what I've tried to do with anyone particularly someone as potentially polarizing as him. I try and find some good stuff. And there is some good stuff. I'm You've not saying, life. okay, not quite my cup of tea, but yes. <laughs> Does he talk, he talk he more about his good things. I'm trying to find good things. He's got a hot wife. I mean, you know. Doesn't he talk more about his daughter? That's another, that's another topic. Well, whoa, 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 that's a whole nother show. We need a psychologist look, here for that. Look, that's the whole look. thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of my friends who live there who are Republicans said to me, yeah. The, the problem is people think we all love him. So we don't love him. Yeah. We don't we wouldn't would, we wouldn't have our daughters dating him. That's not that's 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 an immature way to look at him uh right. in terms of why we like why we voted for him. We didn't right. vote him because he's our good buddy. Some people show, sure. yeah. They like yeah. they they're like people go to the rabbits, they think he's fantastic. Fine, the people that got McDonald's fries from him. Great, that's fine. But the guy in the middle of that, you know, the fly of a territory that 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 people yeah. that ignored, they yep. they felt, in my opinion, that he was the only guy listening to them. That's whether true. he follows, whether he follows through on a single thing is not the point. Right. The point is, in order to get elected, you say whatever you need to say, make whatever mm -hmm. promises, whatever threats to bring people in. Now, now you will see in the first hundred days, a year or two, we'll talk in a year and see what's going on. Right, right. Is some of the stuff scary? Yes, of course it's scary. But trying to play devil's advocate here, there are some things on the left side that are very disturbing as well. And I'm mm -hmm. going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. I lived in Connecticut. And in Connecticut, there are a lot of um, girls who try to get into college uh, as swimmers. They try to get okay. swimming scholarships. And you know where I'm going with this, but for people who don't know, I'm just going to keep going. So I, I, so I'm, I went... My daughter went to school with those kids, and I got to know the parents, and I had a little bit of an idea of their journey. So okay. this is what happened, particularly in the state of Connecticut. I can't speak about any other state like that because I didn't live there. Um, I think a lot of people are in a state of shock, but that's another story. Uh, right. But Connecticut, that's where I live. So there are a lot of okay. kids there. Swimming is a big thing. A lot of water polo teams, lacrosse is big there. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that what they do is they use – their talent, particularly, I'm talking about the girls now, their right. talent as a swimmer to get a college uh, oh, bursary, sure. scholarship, whatever exactly. it is, because college is really expensive, and that's yeah. the path they choose. Right. So, so you have to do well in the pool. And the whole thing has been upset in recent years. I'm not saying it happens all the time, but, but the whole transgender issue is a real problem. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I bring it up is that for some voters, there's one issue that makes them vote one way. So right. say, for example, abortion rights are really important for you. Then you would have definitely voted for Kamala Harris, right? for example. But now, if you're a father of a daughter and your daughter gets denied an opportunity because of uh, a transgender athlete, and I'm not blaming the transgender mm -hmm. athlete at all. I'm not. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 the, it's the system and the, the processes that got them there. Right. Uh, right. You are when you go into the voting booth and you go and you're going to go. Look, I don't like Donald Trump, but the the Blue Party, the Democrats are are on board with this whole transgender idea and right. allowing biological men who've all hormonally corrected, whatever it is. But I'm not happy yeah. as a dad because my daughter, who was five foot seven, was beaten in the by six foot four, whatever that is. Now. That, and again, this is not my, I'm just, I'm relaying you a, a life story and an experience of people I know. And they get right. in the booth and they may, may love Kamala Harris from the depths of the earth, but they get to the booth and they, and they, and they've got to make a decision at that point. And they go, mm -hmm. I, want, I want the best for my daughter. I've got right. money. I don't have to worry about medical care. That's not an issue for me. I'm not worried about immigrants, economy. I've got my own business. I'm fine. But for me, as a father, my daughter is really important. Her future, right. her well-being. And you know what? 
we'll worry about the abortion thing some other time. It's not good. I'm okay. Yeah. It's a bit different for me. But the transgender thing, I have a problem with. So that's why I'm going to vote for this guy because his people, his team, I know, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what the father might say. He's like, I know he, he dances weirdly and he jerks off two guys on stage. I know he's a bit of a clown. He knows that, but he right. knows that. He knows that, but this yeah. is important to him. And he gets into the booth and he says, that's it. And by the way, maybe there's something about Joe Biden he doesn't like, and I'm going to say this as well. He may say, I'm a registered Democrat, but why did they put that guy up? knowing he wasn't yeah. oh sure they changed but they knew so this father's yeah. thinking i feel betrayed in a way and my daughter mm -hmm. i'm worried about her and then he goes and votes for trump for that reason now would he normally vote for trump probably maybe maybe not but this is what i'm saying about not listening to people and we can have a go. You can talk about all the, the, the weird things that trump says i'm talking about the ordinary people the ordinary guy who right. goes in there and makes that and his choice is valid. And the mm -hmm. way his choice is respected over the next couple of years by people who maybe voted for Harris right. will right. determine whether he stays red or not. So if he's made that decision and he sees everybody losing their mind, the next time he votes, even if he really wants to vote Democrat, he's going to vote Republican. Because you're going to go, what is wrong with you people? Why? What? This was my choice. Respect my choice and then i might respect yours and then we'll see about a future but if you don't respect my choice right. then all you're doing is you're just pushing me that way right. i that, everything i reckon is a large chunk of the electorate yeah. they don't have to I like agree. Donald Trump. maybe they yeah. as worried as you are steve maybe they maybe they're even more worried th than you by what he does but they went and voted for the man for some no, of no, the no, reasons no. i did i'm just and worried no about it Right. listening to them. I'm, I'm worried about it when I look at history because I actually can read a book. Um, but I will say this, and I've said this many times during the election. I like 90% of the Republican platform and what they want to do and what Trump said about different countries and what he wants to do and blah, 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 blah. There's that 10% of, if you will, crazy that gets me worried. And that's the constitutional side. But 90% of what Trump wants to do uh, with policies and whatnot, I'm like, we should do that. Like we should. Do, I'm. I'm all for that. And I said this many times. The Democrats had no platform, so you couldn't. Vote, all you were going. All you were voting for for Miss Harris, in my opinion, was democracy, and that's that's good. But if or anti Trump a person or anti Trump, or anti Trump, right? Democracy, anti Trump, whatever you want to look at it is. But being a business person, when I would sit down and I would read their policies and procedures and whatever, and like Harris had some a halfway decent economic plan. Trump's just kind of eh, but he has a whole bunch of other stuff where I'm like, well, this will help increase business and blah 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 blah. So if I'm looking at it strictly from business, I'm I'm voting for Trump. If I start weighing everything else in, I'm literally yeah. dead center. Yeah. But the party in charge has to have a policy and mm. whether it's Pakaka as it may be at least he has a policy where the democrats yeah. think that you have to dig for it and when you find it you're like oh that's really cool why don't you tell anybody about it and that's part of what the issue was to your point about yeah. middle america going yeah. oh, well mr trump says bah, 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 and miss harris says bah, bah, bah. oh we like trump because he said and i get that yeah. and i'm okay with it like i said He's he's the president of our country, and in January, uh, that's great. I'm just hoping, like on the business side, he does what he's going to do. He's going to lower taxes and all this is all great. They're going to run our deficit up to 13 trillion dollars. Blah blah blah. Fine, as long as we he can still keep America, for lack of a term, great, and we're still a power. That's cool. And I don't think we won't be. It's just you know now you have BRICS, you know, looking to put their own currency in this currency and that. So. They, it'll, in four years, we will see if the dollar globally is as strong as it is, if you will, today. And, you know, with Trump being, and I mean this with all due respect in a crazy way, with all his nutsiness, I'm waiting for him just to say, we're going to put the dollar back on the gold standard. And that would be awesome. So, I mean, you know, it's sort of like, it'll be very interesting to see what he does. Um, I, I made I made some jokes uh, when, because I thought I've got to make a joke about this whole US election on the air. So yeah. I thought I've got to be, and we have people, well, there are some ex-American expats, yeah, but obviously 
people here as well watch and they've yeah. obviously they take sides so i thought yeah. it's tricky it's tricky so what i did is i said well so i'll say it i was going to tell a joke a trump joke but right but um the people that like him uh not going to find it funny right, the people right. that the people that hate him won't think it's a joke <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I have to say, if I was if I was his chief of staff or whoever runs his affairs, I'd I'd walk up to him in the White House and I'd say, "Mr. President, well done." Shake his hand. Now give me that phone. <laughs> You're not touching the phone. No more social media for you, sir. This is the thing. I want to say this. You've got him now for four years. So you're gonna you know you got to make the most. And I would say, I would say to him, I said, I I, I said, and again, I I don't know. It would have been a, because both candidates were crap in my view. Yeah, my okay. All right. Uh, the transgender thing, I, I get. You that. see, let me put you this yeah. way: socially, socially, probably I would go Democrat. Fiscally, Republican all the way. Republican, yeah. So, yeah. so what do you do? You know, I'll tell you what your problem is. You don't have a party that caters for someone like me, for example. And I bet you, I bet you, there are a lot of people like me there who go, oh, I don't like some of the social stuff he says, but but business wise. Mm -hmm. He's my man. Yeah. And what do I okay. I don't have to I don't have to have dinner with this man. He just has to make sure I've got a job. And on the right. economy, people were very clear. He was the better guy. And yeah. I heard her talking about the economy quite a lot. And I mean, I studied economics for what that's worth. And yeah. I have I found what she said quite confusing. There a lot of it mm -hmm. was good, but you don't a certain you have a plan. It's like no, but it's not, it, it's it's you can be a fantastic surgeon, but when you right. talk to a patient about what you're going to do, you don't use all the medical terms. Just say right, right. we're going to fix your liver. Okay, yeah. that's what I need to know. What are you yeah, going to yeah. do? Give me some right. nuts and bolts, and and that's the problem. And it gets back to my original point, where uh, people weren't being listened to, or they were being spoken down to. Right. They were being spoken down to. And it doesn't matter which party's in office. Doesn't it? Doesn't matter. Whoever's in office, whoever wants to get in office, has to learn to talk to people. Just talk to people. You right, can right. even say, you know what? We know. I know it seems like political suicide to say that, but I bet you that a lot of people would have gone, okay, right. I can see he doesn't know. So let's. But now, fine. But next week, you must have an idea of what you're going to do. But right, don't. Right. Don't come across as this know-it-all and you're going to fix everything and you're our savior. They don't need a savior. They don't need a savior. They don't need someone running their lives and telling them what to think and, and all of that. They don't want that. Well, from my take is most of the people there just, 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 just stay out of my lane. Let me just do what I do and right. I will tell you what I need. And I need safety. I need, I need, uh, I need a good economy. I need cheap mm -hmm. gas prices and, and so on. But don't tell me what what nouns I must use, whether my daughter is going to be competing against a man. That's right. none of your business. And I think that's, for a lot of people, was an issue. It doesn't, it, my personal opinion is irrelevant. I'm I'm saying what, what those people are saying right. and what is important to them. And I right. think that what the Democrats did in particular is they, they formulated a list of things which were valid. They were very important. They wanted to protect people. They said all the right things. When you put, let me put it to that, when you put a radio show together like I do, it's not about, and you put songs together. I don't play the music I like. I play the music that research shows that our market likes. Right, right. And I would say I probably like 40, maybe 50% tops of the music that I play. But the market likes it. So as a politician, as someone who wants to run for office, it's not about you. It's not about what you want or what you think is important. That's a different job. I think that's a minister or a cop. But I'm saying as a politician, you right. have to, what do you need? What do you need, Stephen? What do you need? And then I yeah. will get that for you. Or I have a plan as to how I'm going to get that for you. But you, you can. I'm listening to you, Stephen. I'm listening to you. Right. What is important I come to you? And 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 I heard people saying, "Oh, they mocked him for serving chips." And I go, "You know, it was staged." And I went, "Well, of course it was staged. What what 
right. person in their right mind would just go to a McDonald's and serve chips. What happens if yeah, someone yeah. didn't like Trump? The man was, they tried to assassinate him for the love of God. Now he's serving yeah. chips. The security nightmare speaks for itself. So obviously all the people that came through were his supporters and it was a good look and it was yeah. it was a media thing. I don't know why people go on about it like it's this great mystery. He shouldn't have done that. Of course he should have done it. Kamala Harris should have done that. She should have made I, more TikTok I videos. I thought he shouldn't should have done it. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Yeah. When he did that. I said, That's good for you, pal. He's I like thought it was guy. fantastic. Yeah. And it was weird and it was strange and it was... It was Trump. But, but yeah, you see, this is what people see. They, they see... Yeah. Um, people making fun of him like that, and they go, then they say what Dennis Quaid says, and he says, you may think he's an asshole, but he's my asshole. Yeah. yeah. And they protect him more, and they gravitate more yeah. towards him. Yeah. Is, you know what? Would I would I go on holiday or vacation with this guy? Probably not. Wait, wait, is he buying? Because if he's buying, then you go, of course. Yeah, sure. Saying, you know, but know, this is the thing people have to get over. That If you want it, yes, this is, okay, I thought of this, yeah. I was talking okay. to someone to them. Um, there's no point, and I'm talking about look, Trump won, so you don't have to worry about what he did or didn't do right. He whatever he did worked. So that's another conversation. But yeah. if you someone who doesn't like the fact that Kamala Harris lost, Kamala Harris lost, what did she do wrong? Cool, I'll tell you everything. She went to she went to places, and I'm not yeah. saying she's not a she's she seems like a decent enough human being. For the love of God, I wish people would separate personal. From yeah. polit it's not the same thing. Get separate them. Separate yeah. them. Neither of those candidates I could ever be friends with. And right. so what? A right. friend is an important thing. A political leader serves you. It's a. T I don't want to be buddies with them. You're crazy. Right. So um, she went to places and spoke to people about how much she loved the fact that they loved her. Yeah. yeah. Great. Great. I'm sure it was fantastic. And I'm going to put this out here. This is an analogy I thought of. Okay. Stephen, if you were a church minister and you right. wanted to expand your congregation, right? Expand it. Get the girls it's pregnant. Pointless. It's pointless Sorry, going to all the parish homes or whatever and having right. tea with your parishioners. Utterly pointless. Because right. of course they're coming to your church. Having yeah. Beyonce and Eminem, uh, I like Eminem, I'm not so sure about Beyonce. At a rally and saying they love you, it 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 makes it gives you a big chubby or whatever it gives her, but right. it's not gonna, it's not going to move the needle. Yeah. So what what do they have to do? So that minister has to has to do the hard work. He has to take the the, the plunge and go and find an association of atheists and yeah. get right in the middle of them and have a beer with them and respect what they feel and respect what they say and mm -hmm. listen to them. And they may go, well, that's that's unexpected. If she had gone, the one guy said he didn't vote for her because she didn't go on the Joe Rogan show. Right. Well, that's a little bit myopic, but I get it. Didn't we say that she should have gone on that? Yeah. Because he was probably undecided. And he thought, no, okay, he made it very clear that he was my guy. She chose my guy. I like her. So he likes Joe. And Joe's fun. And he goes, okay. And, and Donald comes on and blah, blah, blah. And then she yeah. doesn't come on. He goes, well, screw you. Are you yeah. too... What he thinks, because people feel like they own shows. In yeah. his mind, he's thinking, he, Joe Rogan's his buddy. He's buddy. Yeah. And, and he thinks, you wouldn't come talk. It's like people with sports teams. My yeah. team. Yeah. Joe Rogan's my guy. You right. wouldn't talk to my guy. So what am I? What am I? Chopped liver. Am I not good enough? Right. And he goes, right, thank you, Donald. And that's it. And you can mock that, but it's a valid, it's a valid reason. And you have to respect. You don't have to agree with it, but you have to respect it and you have to listen to it. So you need to be the minister going into the atheist convention and saying, you know, I understand why you guys don't believe in God. I get it. I mean, it, it's a tricky path. And, 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 and actually do some homework on why they believe what they believe or don't believe and mm -hmm. speak to that. Don't come in there with a stick and tell them how you're all going to hell. That's not no. going to get to church. Right. Now I'm saying that's the approach you should adopt. Is it hard? Yes. Of course it's hard. It's tough. Yes. You're going to get 99% of the people telling you you're an idiot, even if you right. do it properly. But one guy might go, oh, that's interesting. You just mm -hmm. need one. 
You just need mm -hmm. one. So you gotta do the work. Eventually, you're going to get one. You're gonna get some atheist guy to go, oh, okay, I'll reconsider this. Because really, right. we live in a world unknown. We've had this discussion, right? Okay. So he comes in and he has a great time and he goes, This is great. They weren't begging me for money. I wasn't being lectured to. Uh, they they said I didn't have to just give my soul somewhere and I could just listen <laughs> to what I wanted. <laughs> And the music was great, sort of. And uh, the coffee was terrific. The food was crap. Whatever. And I don't feel judged. And it was right, actually right. Quite engaging. And he goes back to his atheist buddies and he says, shit, I had the total wrong idea. I am, wow. Now I'm saying, I'm not saying the Democrats are ministers and the Republicans are atheists, but you get the analogy. Right. So the next thing, she goes out, she goes on the Joe Rogan show. And she talks a bunch of things. And people go, shit, so this is who she is. That's yeah. wrong. Oh, my God. She does like, uh, I don't know, uh, tacos or something. I wouldn't have thought that about her. And it, right, right, right. a little thing goes off in their brain. And one or two of them go, okay. And they, can, they start to consider her. And they think, okay, maybe. And that's all you need to start the trend. Yeah. Donald Trump has been doing that with people for the last 10 years. He's been doing that for the last that's 40 years. Are you kidding? Since he, since he yeah, got that's what he's been real estate, he's been doing that. So yeah. he's, out, he's, he's in whatever market. And Listen, we've invite, we invited both one, of them to come Steve. on. Huh? He just needs we've one. Invited both, we've invited both of them to come on the show. And now that Mr. Yeah, Trump... I don't think we're going to change in the left. So oh, no, we're not trying to... I think Mr. Trump now will come on the show because he's won because he realizes the gravity of our show. I think he realizes that... No, he doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need us. He needs us. He needs to be, no one needs us. No one needs us, Steve. And his people are saying, don't, don't, be, don't be dark. Don't be ridiculous. This is beneath. Why? You went on every other show. And they would, be, show. they would be absolutely right. I would actually agree yeah. with that. If I was him, if, I'm not meaning to disparage our show, but if I was him, I wouldn't come on the show. Just, I, would I would come on the show in a minute. Are you kidding? Would you? No, I wouldn't. If I was I him, show, if I was he him, be, he could as be the, in Mar a Lago in his, I wouldn't in come his on Donnie, in his Donnie pajamas with a, big, with a big tea on him. And his little silk pajamas. And Don't and forget the fries. Bring the fries. Bring and, some fries. And the fries and the hamburger and a Coke. He could be sitting there on having an interview with us, telling us what he's going to do for the next four, eight, 12, however many years he's going to be in power. And there you go. And that would do a lot for his reputation. I'm telling you. Wait he a would minute. Go higher in the thing. polls. I've just thought of a thing. Sure. You haven't offered him an incentive. You've got to have some food, yeah. something. Well, I don't know. We'll send him McDonald's hamburgers. We'll have we'll have yeah. uh, Uber delivers McDonald's tomorrow. Largo. That I would like to do just to see if the uh, Secret Service will let the Uber guy in. We're like, we really know we really sent this because that was our deal with him: hamburgers, chocolate shake, and some French fries to see if that would work. So I bet you we could call McDonald's and they would just do it for free. Yeah, they would. They absolutely must could have one of his driver, one of his fake robot taxi cabs that don't work deliver it i guess so yeah it'd be very but cool i just want to yeah. but steve just just because i i'm i, I just want to get to get to the end of this and just say that um sure. the country's going to be fine i, I i'm not okay. naively so i firmly believe that the way okay. the, the system of government is set up yes he has very few checks and balances but his checks and balance i'm are the american people when that gets from <laughs> then no no yeah oh, it's imperfect it. of it. course it's so imperfect funny. Of course, it's imperfect, yeah, yeah, so but that's the checks and balance. That's it. That's, a, that's so, not checks and balance. That's just no, well, whatever. I'm saying that is the check. That's that's all there is. That's all. It, but that's all there ever is. People, your 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 bosses, your voters are your checks and balance. And I'm saying that if people don't like it, then they will make sure that he knows that. Um, and if this only, turns out to become time, like Russia, the only time matter. you have to worry is yeah. when when bills start getting passed to limit that voice of people but you know i don't we'll know there's a lot of there's a lot of things that have to happen before you can remove on mass people's rights like that then then you've got something about up until that well, we already yeah. we already did that with you the to worry about you got nothing to worry about after, after, right but after 9 11 we already removed a whole bunch of rights that people don't know if you read the actual patriot act all yeah, 15,000 pages of it there's no there's no there's you have no more rights i mean they listen and see everything you're doing so hi um so that's kind of like yeah the, the only other right you have it's now is if we just don't troubling. have elections it's yeah. troubling it's, it's, it's troubling. what it is so 
I will say this is going to sound very Trump-like of me, but okay. that's I'm Trump saying that I'm saying that on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I understand. I don't agree, but I understand why a government would want to do that. I don't agree with it. I don't no. agree with it, but I understand it uh, because ostensibly you're trying to identify threats to your government, to your democracy. Sure. Let's go with that. So, so the important thing is to make sure you've got the right government. That's the challenge. Those are the people doing the homework. That's enough. I didn't say I agreed with it. I didn't say I agreed right. with it. But I will say one other thing. When I lived there, when I went on this one show, and we mm -hmm. were talking about, um, well, South Africa and yeah. its views in the world, which a lot of people around the world completely misunderstand, and I say to them, it's the government. It's not the people. Right. This, this friendly thing that we supposedly have with Russia, I can assure you that is not what people in this country believe or want. We don't dislike Russia. We don't like them. They're just there. But this buddy-buddy thing that people think we have, well, it's not true. How do I know that's not true? Well, um, facts. If you go and look at the pre preferred trading countries, there was a list that Putin put out about a year or so ago when we were right. supposedly big buddies and they were doing yeah. training exercises. Yeah, We weren't on it. South Africa wasn't on no. it. You're just a really and close friend. So, <laughs> so if there's love, it's not mutual. It's not yeah, mutual. Yeah, I agree that. So, so. so I can assure you now people here don't go, oh, yes, Russia, give it to us up the ass or whatever. Uh -huh. That's not happening. Um, China is an interesting one for me because I've always, um, when I was a kid, I was about 19 when I was in, when I briefly went to actual university before I went right. into other things. I spent a year and then I did university courses and got degrees that way and then right. got into broadcasting. But the actual year that I spent at university, my, my best mate, who is now a counselor here, is... I think he's Chinese born, but he's a South okay. African. He's grown up here. And I learned a lot about China from him, not from okay. the crap that I read and his family and the way they are. And I've always, and this sounds like a kumbaya moment, I've always rather liked them. I've always thought they were very cool. They were very respectful. They've got, uh, I'm not talking about the government. I'm talking about the people. Right. I judge a country by its people. And I've always enjoyed them. I've always thought they were incredibly hardworking dedicated mm -hmm. smart people who are unbelievably good at maths i don't know how but the point is they're not i've never they seen driving though but they're good at math so. <laughs> exactly i've never seen them they're just they're doing what they need to do for their country mm -hmm. i've never right. which is, should 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 make people instead of instead of worry look the island thing is an interesting story the whole the philippines and the, the and what's it called island, island. That's another story, but that's politics. I'm talking about the people. The people that I've met, great. Right. They are. They are. Um, well, in, in in some senses, I've always thought that the Chinese culture obviously is much older than ours. They've they've well, they, yeah. they're actually they're forever. actually the old they're actually the old man of the world. They've yeah. We're basically kids compared to them in terms mm -hmm. of our culture and our wisdom and our mm -hmm. beliefs and all of that. They've been doing this for freaking millennia you know they've they've and they play the long game and they are smart people and they're patient yeah. but i don't find them to be with a few exceptions um leaders in history they're not they, i don't see them as warmongers they're not they're not about that and colonizing the read, world you'd have to read early crap. chinese history then because in early chinese history with yeah, the no, different dynasties they were yeah now i'm talking about now and now they do belt and road the BRI program, and because of that, they are they're what they're doing is they are to, to use an American slang, they're making China great, and they're making it great because they're loaning money, they're building infrastructure, they're kind of owning yeah. everything. So they so instead of using an army or using whatever, they're using economic muscle, economic really colonization, and, and, yes. that, and that's what they're doing, and they're doing a great job at it. So that's what and and for Trump, that's what he has Good to work. compete with now because we're not going to do BNR. We're not doing any kind of belt and road initiatives um, because we can't compete. We haven't competed with the Chinese in 30 years. John Philip, exactly. I think you know a little bit, but from Lost Dollar, he and I were doing deals in South America and all over the world. And I really come across the Chinese, whether it was the Chinese railroad, the Chinese, all the time um, for infrastructure projects. And we would just be like, 
okay, well, we can't compete with like 0.00001% interest. Yeah, it's kind of hard. So it was one of those things and they supply everything. So it was fascinating to see that just say at the turn of this century, which sounds funny to say, yeah. um, but they've been doing it for a while. Um, and, you know, um, Mao Zedong and his little red book, very cool. And then when he died and Deng Xiaoping came into power, Deng Xiaoping was a capitalist straight up. Like he made no qualms about it. I'm a capitalist. I'm bringing China back to what it was in like, you know, a thousand CE. And it was Deng Xiaoping who made China what it is today. And Xi is taking Deng Xiaoping's to the next level. So mm. it's very interesting when you read stuff out of China, what how they're looking at it and what they're now because of Trump winning what they're infusing into their economy and what they're going to do globally and this and that. And I go back to what I originally said at the beginning of the program, Americans, congratulations once again to Mr. Trump, but they don't understand what a tariff is because we're all like, yeah, China's going to pay. And I'm like, no idiot, you're going to pay. And once again, it's, and it's good that we have stupid people. We have 360 million here and I guess 80% of them are stupid. And if you don't understand certain things, and you hear something, it's just like, that's awesome. And you don't think through it, not so much. So my hope is that Mr. Trump does his policies to make economically strong America. Um, and then when it's time in 2008 for him to leave, he does not want, he does not become a Putin. He doesn't become the other guy with the mustache. He doesn't become a king. It's like, I did my four years. I can leave now. And if he does well, that, then I'll be kudos to him. That's that's the only thing that I want to, as long as that happens, we're good. Um, and then whoever the next idiot that comes in in 2008 gets to inherit, hopefully, all this economic power, business power, strength that Mr. Trump created. Mm. And if that's the case, kudos to the Republicans, kudos to Mr. Trump. If it goes another way, like I said, read the book, saw the play, watched the movie, doesn't do well for us. So, well, we'll see. Unfortunately, uh, we can't control humanity. We can't control behavior. And if that's what America has to go through to improve, great. So it's either going to get better, and that's fine, or it's okay. going to get worse. And there'll Can be some pain, and people, and people might do a little bit more homework when there's pain. Yeah. People usually pay attention, more attention when there's pain. So yeah. I'm just, I'm saying, I'm saying from the other side, if the if the Democrats ever want to have a shot at anything oh, again, yeah. they need to sit down and and not uh, mock anything that the Republicans have done, yeah. or their I voters, agree. or their supporters. Yeah. They have to say it was our fault. We did not listen. What can we do? Don't beat yourself yeah. up for a pulp about it. That's pointless. Because yeah. then, you know, if you don't like. If you don't like criticism, if you don't, if you're not willing, so let me put it this way: if you're a politician and you you want to improve, you have to you have to you have to have the ability to listen, and you have to understand that you're wrong. If you can't handle that, you shouldn't be in politics. Simple as that. I agree. Yeah. You shouldn't, and you do what you need to do. But I don't think they've done that, and it's all okay. about listening. And again, there is this ridiculous idea that everybody likes Trump. I say, I said to some of my Democrat friends, does everybody like Obama? No. Right. I know a lot of Democrats who don't like him. They still voted for him. Uh, a lot of people didn't like Biden. They thought, oh, my God. But they voted yeah. for him. That was more, a lot of that, to some extent, was a bit of an anti-Trump vote. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. But the point is, um, you get, you. get nobody has to like you. You I have to. But people, but people must feel like you're listening to them. And that's all. It, 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 and, and you're worried about all the rhetoric. And I would say, yeah, it is rhetoric. That's what politicians say the dumbest things on rallies. They do. Both sides do. Right. And, and then someone will say, yeah, but he said it worse. Well, he's in office. So right. Well, there's no, there's no worse. There's why, no don't you watch, why don't you look at his playbook? You, know, you mentioned the Chinese. I'll tell you something yeah. that I absolutely uh, in awe of with the Chinese. There's something they that's do. Good. Hey, what? No, no. No, <laughs> no, their food's good. Their food is good. Um, but not 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 that stuff, not Chinese food that you get that people yeah, yeah, think. Food in China is very good. Do you proper, know that Hong Kong proper is very Chinese good? Food. Yeah. yeah, proper Chinese food. That's right. awesome. But yeah. I'm saying what the Chinese do, and they've always done, 
is, and this is from a, my friend who is of Chinese descent. He said to me, he said, they, he says, I'll admit they're not the greatest innovators. They're not. Right. They're not, not the greatest innovators. They are good engineers, but they are able to. So if you've done something great, Steve, they, can, they will study what you've done right. and they can find better ways of doing it. That, that's their strength. So they can, and they've got, and they can do it en masse. And that's something you should never try to compete with them on volume. You must be joking. So you can't, you can't. exactly. And that's what, they, that's what they do so well. And I'm saying that they are, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm saying that, that don't try to compete with that. These, the, mm -hmm. And I would say going forward, um, you mentioned that they, what, the railroads, the railroad projects and the... Uh, and the so they, they have something called the BRI, the Belt and Road Initiative. So what they do yeah. is they go to, like, if you will, Bolivia, Colombia, Africa, the Middle East, and they'll say, hey, we know you can't afford to build a railroad, just say, from the, the ocean to here. So what they do is right. they come in and they, they do the infrastructure and they charge them like, you know, 100 bips a basis points and they get to pay it off for the next 500 years. And if you miss a payment, they own it. So it's very, so that's what they're doing. So what they're doing is really what they did before they closed, um, when Zhao closed off China in 1413 CE. They're doing the same thing they did from like that until, you know, 10,000 BCE. They are going around the world and they're integrating everything so they can control it. And so that's what their BNR program is. And it's, and if you look at it, it's just history repeating itself, granted 600 years ago, but it's fascinating to see that. So they actually have a clue. And I, I love when I study Chinese culture and history and what it's fascinating to me. Ours in America is still very new. So that takes about a day. China's like you put it millennia. So it takes a while to get it. When you get it, you're just like, I see it. I get it. You know, I think right now they're, you know, they're, they're making poopy in their pants because of Trump and the white house. Um, I know, you know, well, no, economically they are. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they're doing internally now to prepare their economy for tariffs and this and that. Like they're, they're not sitting and waiting. Like they started to do this over the summer just in case. So now, if you will, their worst fear has come to light. Now they're doing other things to prepare their economy so they don't, this doesn't hurt them on a global scale. So, mm. you know, it is what it is. But like I said, if Trump can do everything he says he's going to do and, and keep the world safe and keep America going and everybody makes more money, I'm all for it. So that's we'll see what happens. It's okay. fun to see. And as long as the Backstreet Boys and Beaver don't do anything, I'm happy with that. No, so, you know. no. <laughs> oh, and, and, I, and I cannot stress this enough. Um, that ticket that Elon got from South Africa to the U.S. all those yeah. years ago. Actually, I think it was to Canada, but you know, you, my point is valid. Is uh, it's a one-way ticket, please? Yeah, listen, we we can send them to you anytime you want. There's no, an article in a fine. magazine I read well, good. two days ago. Fine. Here's the here's the best thing on Elon. There was an article I read, and they said immigration was looking at his application to be, I guess, a citizen or something, and he filled it out incorrectly or gave false information. And the article was like, "Are we going to deport him?" And I just chuckled to myself, and I'm like, "No, his boy one, we're not deporting him. We're keeping him." Fortunately, so but he's gonna be a czar or something. I watched a discussion that him and his brother, what's his brother Kimball had no about idea. the about well, his brother's name is Kimball. The two of them started the they used to they started things when they were students. Um yeah. I, I haven't drilled down on it and seen exactly what happened, but I've I've seen some of the things. So he ostensibly came over, came to the US on a student visa. Okay which limits the kind of work you can do. Right. And I'm not sure that he was doing the work that he was only limited to do. So right. well, I there, was some, somebody... there, was, there were some gray areas. But yeah. you know what? I, that, that sounds like I, I, don't, I think he's done it, and, and I think he's – good luck to him. I think he's done fine. Yeah. I'm, he's done, I'm, I think $230 billion later, I think he's done all right. I think he's done fine. I just wish when – as a representative of this country over there, I just yeah, wish yeah. he was a little more normal. <laughs> I, I think just just a little more. I know he's yeah. originally from Mars. I know that, and then okay. he grew up here. But yeah, yeah. I just, you, you know, know because the short, like, oh, all, all people short. like that from South Africa. No, yeah. they're not. They actually. Short? Elon huh? is officially, you know, Rob Vegas says. 
Elon Musk is from Mars. We know it. We can prove it. He just grew up in South Africa. That's going to be the short that's going to 8 million people are going to watch that. And Elon's going to call you and go, I want to come on this show and talk to you because I like you better than Robert. Great. Great. I, <laughs> one of the things, one of the things I have to say is in all the time that I've been there, uh, yeah. I'm not saying I'm totally representative of people from this country. Cause as you know, I wasn't born here. I've got right. all kinds of bloodlines running through me. I am, I am, I'm basically a mongrel, which is right. what a lot of Europeans like a are. I'm a mongrel. Yeah. I think I've even got some on my grandfather's side, a generation or two back. I think I've got some African blood in me, which means under Jim Crow laws, I wouldn't be classified as white, but the point wow. is, I know it's, it's bizarre. Right. And, but I'm saying that, um, I, when I lived my time, when I lived there, the longer I lived there, the more I realized I was, I was what my friend said, I was, um, I'm American with a foreign accent, but I actually find that the ordinary blokes here right. and the ordinary blokes there, same people, they're the same yeah. people. They're apps that, and, and I, and, and you say, oh, is that for the whole world? No, 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 no. I've lived in Europe in my family originally from the UK. No, not the UK. I'm talking right. about South Africans and Americans, those two groups, and maybe the Australians as well. That those three groups yeah. are very similar people, very yeah. similar people in terms of what they want, what they like, the sport they like to watch, the activities they like, enjoy what's important to them. Yeah. And all three, if you realize yeah. all children of the UK. Yeah. Well, and the Australia and problem with Australia though is when you flush the loo, it goes counterclockwise. So I don't know if they really like us or not. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, really? too, Steve. Oh, we're in the the world. So we're yeah. a crazy country where it goes clockwise. Can I tell you I my know. first trip to Australia? I remember I went to the loo and I flushed and I watched it and I was so fascinated. I think I did it like eight times, going, This is awesome. Because <laughs> I thought doesn't... this was the coolest thing in the world. Mine doesn't go. It just yeah. Ours goes, goes clockwise, and in Australia it goes counterclockwise. I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I, I, I to this day I still think that's the coolest that's thing about Australia. Yeah. Next time yeah. we must talk about well, maybe the the the, the lose. But I, I remember in the states that the lose are very flat and then they drop off, whereas yeah. here it just goes straight down. It's like yeah. a long well, drop. The, we got the troughs. We got tons of lose. Oh, we got the Asian lose. Oh, it's a whole show. It'll be great. But hey. This was a lot of fun. I'm glad. So, America, you're in good hands fine. with Mr. Trump. Fine. And uh, the rest fine. of the world, good luck. God bless. Um, that's it. And Mr. Trump, Ms. Yeah. Harris, and Mr. Musk, we invite you all the time. We know you guys really want to come on. Now that you've won the election, you can come on and you don't have to worry. Ms. Harris, you lost the election. You, you should come on and let us talk to you anyway. And Elon, yeah, and, um, he's and keep it to you. Yeah, it's yeah. not the it's end of the world. The sip, love sip of upper lip. God. Yeah, it's really. Not grow a pair of balls. Or grab, or, or grab some penises and you'll uh, get in there in 2008. That seems to work. Just trying to help. I'm, I'm going to be the campaign. I'm going to be the campaign manager for Ms. Harris now. Uh, there you go. All right, kids. It's been fun. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Every Thursday morning, we are live. Um, I'm sorry. And then we, we broadcast Thursday afternoon on a podcast or here on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, Joel Farts Making Noises, here on YouTube, TOF Entertainment. And we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you all next week. Cheers, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this Harold Woods, Rob Vega, whatever the hell he wants to call himself, fellow. You know, this this podcast thing, it, it makes him feel very important and he's a difficult fellow as it is to deal with. So thank you so much for putting up with him and, and do take care.